hello and welcome to season 11 of the Mundane to Magical online summit series. My name is Louise Matson, and as always, I truly am blessed to be your host. I'm really excited to share on this last live call for this season, a wonderful brand new speaker, Susan Kennard. Now I connected with Susan and her work relatively recently and I absolutely love her energy, the frequency of joy that she holds in her field and the work that she shares with the world is just wonderful. In many ways, the work that she shares and the messages that come through feel very similar and familiar to my own connection with spirit and I felt an instant kinship when I connected with her. Susan is a spiritual scientist with a wealth of experience and a passion for healing and transformation. She's expanded her expertise in the field of psychology and psychotherapy, in which she's worked for over 25 years, by incorporating various energy healing modalities into her practice. Now, this unique blend of knowledge and skills has allowed her to develop her own powerful approach to helping others. Susan's focus lies in assisting individuals in clearing their trauma on all levels, and she's well versed in meta health, emphasizing the interconnectedness of the body and soul by facilitating the healing journey of the body through the soul. Susan guides her clients towards holistic well being. Now, she's specialized in PTSD, and this has led to her working closely with veterans and those who have endured significant trauma, which I'm all I'm sure that we can all relate to in some way, shape, or form throughout our lives. Susan has a clear channel to spirit and the higher realms, and her work is known for its speed and directness and accuracy. And as a medium and channel, she collaborates with her galactic guides, incorporating channeling, toning, and light language to facilitate deep healing and heart activation, empowering individuals to manifest their desires effortlessly. Susan is the author of Awaken the Light Within Your Heart and is a sought after speaker appearing on numerous TV platforms. Susan also hosts her own podcast, The Spiritual Awakener, and you can find her on YouTube as she comes on with a live transmission every Friday. Driven by her unwavering belief in our innate capacity for self-healing and the ability to create a life of abundance, Susan is dedicated to helping individuals reconnect with their inner healer and align with their soul's mission. Now, the topic for today's conversation is awaken the light within your heart. As I've mentioned before, I don't have themed summits, but each speaker brings the perfect message to us at the perfect time. And Susan is a wonderful example of this as she bookends beautifully the messages that were coming through from Spirit with me on the opening call. Mm. Susan will not only be sharing how we can awaken the light within our heart, but also yeah. how doing so connects us to our higher selves, our mission and allows abundance to flow seamlessly to us, through us and from us. As always, please feel free to make any comments that you desire in the chat box or the Q&A and feel free to ask questions as we go along with this chat. Of course, I can only see the questions in the chat that are made in the Zoom, not on the um, YouTube live stream. But I will get to the comments that you make on the YouTube after the live event has ended. And so without further ado, it is a great honour and with great joy that I welcome you to the show, Susan. Thank you, Louise. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great to be here in this energy. Powerful <laughs> day today. Absolutely. It is a powerful day today, um, both in terms of the astrology, but also the, the Mayan um, time magic as well as we enter into a, a Mayan wave spell of the blue night, which is all about dreaming, dreaming the, the new earth, you know, the the abundance, the joy, the love, and, and all the other frequencies that we want to manifest in the world. And so this is beautifully timed for this. I know, right? I was just thinking that, actually, when um, I was looking at the astrology of it, I was like, mm, this is interesting how this has turned out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but everything is in perfect timing, yeah, as always. Mm, <laughs> always in perfect order, isn't it? Absolutely. So, I mean, I've given a, a brief introduction to you and your work, but if there's anything yeah. else that you want to share about your work and how you assist other people and, you know, the, the messages that come through you before we go into the, the topic for today, then please feel free to introduce mm -hmm. yourself more fully. I think what's coming up recently um, really strongly, and um, we're going to talk about the three pillars of abundance, of course, but 
the ascension pathway you know how 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 important it is for us now to be the frequency match to the new earth which you were talking about and how by really aligning to why we're truly here understanding that aspect of why we're truly here that allows us to be in alignment with this new earth that we're creating mm-hmm. and um and definitely you know the recording it on this day going live on this day and this weekend you know it's really about a 14 year astrological aspect and so you know it's not just necessarily we'll see big changes we will and there have been you know in my community people have been saying big surprises have happened and all sorts of things which is the uranus aspect but you know actually over the next 14 years we're actually going to see you know incredible expansion with our ascension pathway Mm. and one of the beings that we talked about this before ages ago when you booked me in the galactic uh, council that work with me now are the rainbow galactics and they weren't working with me then and they're just quite new so i think they come in um called the rainbow galactics because of the ascension frequency of the full spectrum of light so it's possible they'll pop in and uh, have a chat with us later let's just see we'll hold the door open i think i i, I saw them kind of hovering in the background you know um uh, ready to ready to kind of put their little bit in but um just to say that if you, if you haven't met me before then i'm very grounded i'm very down to earth i it is what it is with me um i'm I'm not too woo woo in the sense, you know, I'm very, very grounded in my in my science background. Um, and yet I am a channel and I see dead people, not that they're dead, but I do see them and I see um clairvoyantly, um, clairaudiently I hear and you know, I, I get a sense of um timeline shifts and I get to see in the body. So there are those few bits there that are kind of expanding out absolutely yeah no and that's beautiful and it's beautiful that you know when when we do as you say we're going to you know Mm. connect into the heart you know awakening the Mm. light within our heart but when we do that we find our own perfect way of working with the energies and the frequencies that we are and and our own uniqueness and that was the magic you know that that spirit brought through on on my transmission at the beginning of the, the summit you know, we all have a unique magic and yeah. I, I'm clairsentient and I'm mm. uh, cognizant and I only allowed the, the clairvoyance and the clairaudience to come through much later. Yeah. But, you know, we, we will have our our own flow. We'll have our own strength uh, and yeah. it's allowing that to be. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, it's to be is, is like that's a really, really good way to say it, because um, quite often we have an attachment, you know, to outcome. Um, Debbie, who's on today, actually, was, she, she's here and she's acknowledged the Debbie that she is, which is lovely. And we had a conversation literally about it today, about, you know, the attachment to to needing to know. Mm. And um, when we're in the B, we, we don't have an attachment to needing to know. And yeah. we'll definitely talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So the title is Awaken the Light Within Your Heart. Mm. So, I mean, for those, and I'm I'm imagining that, that a lot of the audience that do connect into this have an awareness of what that is and what we're yeah. talking about. But just for, yeah. you know, just to kind of frame it, what do we mean by that? That's the title of my book, of course, Awaken the Light Within Your Heart. Um, so essentially, um, it's about the light that we are so um if we're thinking about who we truly are we quite often know that we're soul having a human experience but actually to embody that light and actually truly live that light is the awakening of that light within your heart so coming from a place of um heart centered so as you operate throughout your life there's there's a heart center which is the remembering who you are Mm. so essentially you know as you remember who you are in a in a visceral embodied way then you are love itself 
So awakening that light that you are within your heart, of course, is the combination of the love out to the world. Um, and it's difficult. Love isn't really the right word because we, you know, we have our perception of what love is. You know, we might love a child, we might love an animal, we might love another person. But what Spirit's really talking about here is that source is love. So it, it's not the love of an animal. It is, but it's not the love of an animal or a child or a person or yourself. It's love is the frequency of mm. the light that we are and the, the physicality that we hold that light in. Is just a jacket really um, yeah just a jacket to hold that love and, and I honestly think that our journey is that we come in to forget we forget when we come in right and then we spend the whole rest of our life trying to remember right oh oh that's who we are oh right okay so as we go through our life and I think it's massively speeding up and I think that you know that's why I mentioned about the ascension pathway because it's speeding up to a point where um, we don't have to necessarily sit in hours of meditation like we used to. We actually, another thing I was talking to Debbie about today, we actually only need to, and perhaps we'll, we'll do a bit of that, like just for a few moments um, when, when you feel it's the right time to do that. But just to actually experience being embodied in our higher self and our light mm -hmm. is, takes a moment. Yeah. You know, it takes a moment. It doesn't have to be a long journey that it used to be. And th this came up in one of the other conversations and I, I can't recall who it was with. Um, but again, you know, the term ascension, it makes it sound as if we're going up and out to mm -hmm. something outside of yeah. ourselves. But it, it's not, mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah. it's really that embodiment process. It's yeah. it, it's the acknowledgement that that is what we are. That is who we are. Yeah. Um, you know, the heaven on earth that people talk about. So not yeah. that we need to go home, yeah. that we are home. Yeah. 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 And, and allowing, uh, and for me, it's kind of like, um, like you said before, you know, that, that coherence between the, the, if you like the, the kind of the divine aspects of ourselves with this mm -hmm. kind of mundane physicality that we, yeah. that we're walking around in, but like yeah. combining those and having a, a coherence between the frequencies um, yeah. that, that each yeah. and every aspect, dimensional aspect of us kind of holds. Um, and that's, for me, what embodiment is, you know, sort of joining up all the pieces so that they're all in alignment kind of thing. Because and you I can't just... be one without the other. I can, and, yeah. and, and, you know, um, when I look into the field, when I do a um, kind of Ascension Pathway sessions and things, and I have a look at it and... I can see sometimes people vary in their human and sometimes people vary in their, 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 their soul self. And then we have to kind of like align it so that it's both. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not in our, our human self, we're not able to receive the abundance of being human. Yeah. And if we're not in our soul, we're always in our soul self. But if we're not actually connected to that in a way and there's resistance in the way and blocks and all of that, then we're not able to bring in that channel that we are. So yeah, it's getting a really beautiful balance with that. Exactly what you said, like embodying all of those, like the multidimensional part of us, yeah. all aspects into the now, into Absolutely. the world. Mm. Um, Tara's put a, an interesting question. Ah. Uh, do we have different channels? What would you mean? Well, yeah, I mean, if you can explain more about what you mean um, by do we have different channels? Are you are you meaning because you've put rainbow galactics? Are you meaning different can beings, we connect probably. into different yeah. beings or? Um, I mean, it's like we separate thoughts, etc. I don't really understand that. Yeah. Could mm. you just kind of um, broaden? what what you're what you're actually asking in that question um because i'm sure that'll help other people because they probably you know really want to know that as well you know yeah disjointed mm -hmm. consciousness well i mean from my perspective from what you're asking we are multi-dimensional beings and so we will have a voice for each of those different frequencies that we are so my what i call my small human self will have an opinion and you know that might rule 
my day in, you know, one day and my higher self will have another perspective, you know, that kind of Eagle's perch perspective. Um, and so in that way, it's like storing stuff on the stellar nation stars. <laughs> Yeah. I yeah, suppose but... the way I, I would explain it, I, it might help a little bit. Um, I love the way you explained it because it is like you've got that part of you, oh, I don't know, an ancient part of you, and then you've got the child part of you that triggered an ancient part of you. So I, I, I get, you know, what what our friend Tara is saying. But if you imagine it that oh, this is how I can kind of see it in my mind's eye and it's the best way I can explain it, is imagine the bigger part of you was this huge ball of cotton wool um i think you have that all over the world so that's okay yeah big ball of cotton wool and that was the bigger part of you okay and there's a tiny tiny bit of that cotton wool that is here now that is connected to all of that cotton wool <laughs> it's kind of cool right so imagine it like that so the higher self like you, you were saying so the higher self is all of that embodied in so you are in spirit as well as being here and when you said louise about the dream about the dream time about dreaming the um new earth you know the golden earth yep. it is a dream so often you know channels will say um well we're actually in spirit dreaming human mm. right and there is a channel called Bashar. I think people might have heard of him. And uh, he says that. He says that, you know, you are actually in spirit dreaming the human existence, which can be a little bit, you know, off the wall to think about. But if we just imagine where the bigger, bigger part of us is there, we bring down and embody that bigger part of us, which has been, is, and will be many different aspects. And we're bringing all that wonderful wisdom in the now. And I think that's the best way to explain embodiment is, and we're playing this, we're on a stage, we're playing. We can either choose to jump on the stage and get embroiled in something, or we can look from the audience and see what's happening. But it's definitely a stage where we're, you know, enjoying ourselves and playing things out and creating and passing emotion through our heart and learning that we're not on our own that we have our guidance and our gps for our soul it's our higher self and we have all of that and, and i suppose if the question for you know tara is rhetorical question is that it does that make sense you know like that would be different channels if you could look at it that way mm. yeah. and the, the other thing for me as well is um because when when I was a child and, and I shut everything down because I was threatened with being locked up for being mad, um, I didn't want to see and I didn't want to hear. Yeah. And so I made a statement very, very young in life that I didn't want to see dead people. No disrespect to yeah. those that have yeah. passed and yeah. want to communicate. And I absolutely have a lot of respect for those people who bring those messages through. I wanted to connect in with the highest vibrational beings of divine love and light. That was the statement that I put out consciously wow. as a child. Yeah. Um, now, the other thing that I have grown to realize is I didn't need a name. I didn't need to know who they were. Yeah. It was just the energy, the frequency that I was connecting into yeah. because I refused to see and I refused to hear. But other people bring through yeah. You know, galactics yeah. um you know galactic councils um i know magenta pixie brings through the nine um and and so it's it's allowing just allowing it yeah, to be yeah. whatever it is because you're going to bring through a channeling you're going to bring through in a form that is perfect for you and it's going to match to you yeah exactly. frequency match to your blending with your frequency the because they change all the time you know like the beings will come in like i said the rainbows the rainbow galactics came in recently a few months ago and they weren't they were there but they weren't there if you know what i mean now they hadn't shown themselves yeah. and they kind of change all the time you know beings change all the time depending on what we're doing it's just my opinion but what we're doing who we're working with and what's happening in our life 
Mm. So it, it's it's just this beautiful symbiotic relationship with spirit. Mm. You know? So we don't really need to know who they are. No, yeah. Trust, um, you know? Clara's book, we're always connected. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that's the key thing to yeah. kind of take from this Unity. talk and all of the other talks. You know, it is who and what we are. Yeah. And so, you know, the I guess the the importance of awakening the heart and allowing ourselves to connect in is that kind of deepening of that acknowledgement of who we are and and being able to kind of freely connect in with our higher selves um so yeah i mean do you want to share more about the pillar the 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 how why it's so important to connect and particularly at this time because everything is accelerating so quickly yeah i i, I feel drawn to talk about the three pillars of abundance because it's so simple and so you know the guides gave me this simplicity probably six months ago I, I, time evades me really but they gave it to me and the first one is know thyself which we spoke about a little bit earlier so know thyself so know that you truly are higher self within a physical being yeah and um the second pillar of abundance is know why um, sorry know that you're not on your own so know that you walk this path even physically if you don't have family friends animals children whatever you're never on your own okay that there always are your beautiful beings that are supporting you even if you don't talk to them you choose not to or you choose not to ask anything they'll always be there and the third one is know why you're here now that doesn't have to be the third pillar of abundance doesn't have to be you're a spiritual teacher, you know, you're a medium, you're this, you're a teacher, whatever. It doesn't have to be that. It just has to be, you know that you're here, not just to be human, mm. right? So it's, it's I'm not just here and then I die and that's it. Yeah, that's, that's the difference. So it's like, you don't have to actually know exactly why you're here, but you need to know that there's a reason why you chose to come at this time of ascension, right? And, you know, th there's a beautiful contrast going on in the world where we have some of the 3D of the old earth still living um, in the sense of still alive in the sense of the earth perceptions. And there's a lot of the new earth, you know, alive, right? And so it's a beautiful contrast and, and we get a choice. And why I think they call it three pillars of abundance is because abundance is our birthright and and i truly believe and this is something that has been with me for a very very long time from the guides is that especially when i'm working with dis-ease so you know when um someone is showing um a deep picture of dis-ease um it's the the soul is talking to the body as a barometer so i'll just do a disclaimer I'm sure you have one already, but I'm not a doctor and I don't claim to heal or cure. In fact, no doctors can cure either. So, you know, we are our own holy grail, okay? And we need facilitators uh, like you, like me, like many other people to assist. But essentially we are our own inner healer. So, so our body, our beautiful um, body is acting as this kind of like indicator and so our, our soul is talking to us via our body. So if our body is showing a message, then it's our job to listen to it, okay? And um, if our money dries up, did you hear that in the background, by the way? That's our parrots. Could you hear oh, the parrots? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have two parrots. We have like a menagerie of animals and um, that was the macaw, the baby macaw calling Martin because that's her call for him. <laughs> so if you heard that, I do apologize. <laughs> it's quite cute as well. Um, but essentially, um, you know, we, we, we basically, if our money dries up, then there's a message in that. If our body shows us a message, there's a message in that. If we are feeling um, that we're on our own, there's a message in that, you know. So these three pillars of abundance allow us to say, okay, so where am I out of alignment with the truth of who I really am? Yeah, which is knowing we're a soul having a human fun at the moment, knowing that we have guides to help us, of course, many others, ascended masters, etc., and knowing that we're here for a reason. 
and then we can really take responsibility for what our body shows what our you know emotions show you know our inner child journeys our look at our mirror outside of us what is that mirror of us showing us and where do we need to tweak it and and that is so exciting and this time of expansion and and speeding up of our life is it's about freedom it's about living while you're here it's about remembering who you are it's it's about um it's about living in a place of trust and not needing to know the outcome which is from a human perspective the hardest thing because we always want to know we want yeah. to know is that going to happen da, da, da. what's going to happen you know all of this stuff and that's our human right yeah. and and so coming to the place of like okay everything is in divine order which is what you said louise you know about dates and times everything is in divine order and we have everything we need and it's our responsibility to look at where that might be out of alignment to where we want to go you mm. know if we're happy where we are if we feel completely at ease then we don't need to strive you know we don't need it might not be in our soul's contracts to strive it might be in our soul contract to just you know be at home and look after animals right that might be our soul contract no one no one is the same so um it's important just to remember those things you know know who you are know you're not on your own and know that you have a reason for being here three pillars of abundance absolutely mm. yeah exactly tara you know what's meant for us yeah. won't miss us but we can miss the the doorways we can miss the opportunities if our eyes are closed to them and and our little little small human self is needing that absolute yes it's going to be worth doing this or yes this is guaranteed because it's never going to get that particularly and that's my personal experience in life you know you've mentioned trust it really is all about trusting because a lot of this is in the unseen realm at the start you know you kind of have to believe it before you can see it <laughs> that's exactly it isn't it and you know we often especially me being my science background i had to see it to believe it so so probably why when i had my awakening at 27 ish um i had to see and if i hadn't have been shown clairvoyance immediately i would never have believed it so i think i was given uh, you know that was part of what i obviously chose to experience so that i could bring things forward but um, yes, it's definitely about believing. And that's about your frequency, isn't it? So, you know, you have your, your frequency held in a space of trust, of peace. What happens? You get a reflection of that. Mm. Yeah, back Absolutely. to you. Mm. I mean, the, the other thing is, you know, when, when we consider that, you know, that dream, we mm. are, you know, a spiritual being dreaming this human experience. Um, and if you're a lucid dreamer, you know you can create in dreams. Well, we, that's where we are the creator of our own reality. So depending on what's going on in our frequency field, not just in the physical body, but in the whole of our frequency field, that's what we're going to be drawing towards us yeah. um, as reflectors in the outer realm. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes it's really hard for us to kind of see within ourselves. Um, and particularly on this journey, because we're not taught from childhood to do that. Definitely. Yeah, everything's out, well, there. My children are. Things out there. My well, children are. Yeah. My children I'm have just, been reminded. Conscious <laughs> parents do, but yeah. you know, the majority of but us we weren't. Yeah. We weren't. grew up with everything's out there, you know, the answer is out there, look outside of yourself. So that in a way is why we create these these mirrors to kind of show us the the, the misalignment or you know where where we're blocking and things like that. So um yeah that yeah it's it's beautiful to kind of have that great awareness and that even in itself gives you that awareness that okay there is more to me there's more to this whole experience than what i might be perceiving in this moment yeah and and also not not to beat ourselves up or you know if anyone is kind of feeling well i don't have that i don't have abundance i don't have that you know actually one step at a time and just to kind of you know look at one of those pillars maybe like okay do i really feel like i'm embodied in this do i really trust that is it true to me 
or do I really trust that I have got guides? Like people talk about them, but have I really got them, you know? And then, you know, what, thank you guides are reminding me, what lights you up, you know, like what, what lights you up, mm-hmm. you know? If it lights you up to be in the garden, be in the garden. If it lights you up, yeah, to, to share your message, then do that, yeah. So it's, I always find like what lights you up, what you get excited about, and if you don't get too excited about it, maybe that's a thought, you know. If it's if it's not that exciting to you, then maybe it's time to think what excites me. Continue doing what doesn't excite you for a while, especially if it's a job. And then just kind of like notice where you get openings to things that excite you. Hmm. Yeah, spirit's showing me like a break in the cloud. It's, you know, mm-hmm. you, you've got this really dense cloud, but then the sunlight comes through and it's just that yeah. that slither, uh, you know, just allowing yourself to connect in in whatever way. But yeah, yeah. definitely. I, I went through a process um, when I went through a dark night of my soul um, where I literally would ask myself, what does joy look like in this moment? Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I would just, um, because within that, point I'd realized that I had been playing what everybody wanted me to be but I had no clue who I was anymore not who I was I knew what everybody wanted me to be and I knew the reflection that I was manifesting within myself to please them yeah but I couldn't have even have told you what my favorite color was what I enjoyed to eat because I'd been living my whole identity was based on what others wanted from me um and so I literally went you know minute by minute day by day what does joy look like for me in this moment um so so if you don't know don't worry it's you know that that dense dark cloud that is blocking your entire vision of yourself does break with the light of the sun you know when you allow that to kind of just break through just like a little chink Mm-hmm. And something that I, I talk about sometimes is, is I if someone says to me, well, how do you keep staying in alignment with that? And I was like, well, something you can do is when you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed at night is just put your hand or one hand on your heart and just say, I remember who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember who I am. Right. Because just in that remembering, actually just saying the words, I remember who I am. It just allows a part of you that does remember who you are to be awakened. Mm. Um, Leila's put in, um, how does one embody that pillar of knowing you're not alone? I know it intellectually and I find that it's one of my deepest fears. What I know to do is just to sit with the fear, even though all I want to do is escape that fear. I feel that it might be really helpful to do just a little mini um connection to embodying our higher self and just getting the feeling of that so is that all right just for maybe yeah, a minute absolutely. yeah yeah i think this might be really helpful for for, for everybody so let's just place our hands on our heart hmm. so what i like to do with this is is um in a moment i like to breathe in through my nose and then hold for as long as i can and then breathe out when of course it feels the right time to breathe out and let's just do that for a few moments and and in a moment when i when we start or else (laughs) i can't talk at the same time but essentially then i want us to imagine that light in our heart and then i'll continue with the next piece okay so let's just breathe in and hold yours will be in a different time to me okay by just holding you just go into the silence and the peace and the presence and then just imagine that beautiful cotton wool that light and bring that light through your breath into 
your heart through your crown. You can just normalize your breath now, deep breathing and centralizing your breath. Bring that light all the way down. Just know that you're bringing down that remembering of your higher self into your physical body, embodying it. And just see it go throughout your arms and your hands. And if you find it easier, imagine sparkling light. It might be easier to kind of imagine that sparkle and see it run through every single part of you, every cell of your body. And just breathe normally, maybe breathe out for longer or breathe in for longer. Just play with your breath. You'll know what's perfect for you. And just maybe imagine that if you could look at yourself and you were taking a look from outside, imagine that you were this kind of light in a physical form. You can see right down to your feet that you're light and right up to your head. And then just imagine that behind you and around you, there are just so many beautiful beings, light beings, angels. Many ascended masters are actually here. But even if you can't see them, just imagine the light around you, that they are all these beautiful beings that are here to support you. And just put your hand on your heart and just say, I'm choosing to remember who I am. I'm choosing to remember that I'm not on my own. I'm choosing to remember why I'm here. And you may or may not get a sense of a message or a feeling of warmth or coolness. Let's do it one more time. I'm choosing to remember who I am. I'm choosing to remember I am guided. I'm choosing to remember why I'm here. And now what the guides are showing me is for us to imagine looking up to the stars beyond the stars, that the multi-dimensions are part of who we are, that there is no separation, that there is just the unified light field of consciousness, that we're all sharing, that we are all part of. And you might like to, it's interesting what they're showing me, you might like to imagine that you're bringing that starlight into you because you are that. And just imagine that the universe is within you, the multiverse is within you. And so that feeling may allow you to feel that the human is just holding that light. And now let's ask the question, what lights you up? So you might say, what lights me up? And just listen. When you feel ready, no rush, you can come back. <laughs> so it's just like a mini, I mean, they actually took us further than I thought they were going to do, but I never know what they want to do. But that sense was, I think, to get us to realise that there's no separation, that, 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 that we are connected to all that is. Yeah. Sorry, I've got my dogs with me and oh. <laughs> they are always present when I do healing work. And when we were connecting in, one of them really wanted to join in. So he's just 
Uh, my cat's next to me. She's over there. Yeah, she likes to be in the healing energy as well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> Leila saying thank you. Someone saying beautiful. Tara saying beautiful, powerful. It it's never as complicated as we think it's going to be. I think that's that's the one of the key things. Like you were saying before, you know, years ago we would have to kind of sit in meditation for long periods of time, but it's really not that it's really not that case anymore. Um and just that breath, you know, even yeah. if you just do that breath, that holding. Um, I don't know if you how you found it, but I always find like just for that second, Louise, that you know, um before I'm running a course or whatever I'm doing, I'm just like, okay. And just holding that breath and it just kind of aligns me, reminds me in that second, energetically. Yeah. I'm there, you know? It's it's well, I mean, Nora calls it coming into that stillness and it, it is, you know, that that still point. Um I often see it as like a an infinity uh loop of oh, yeah. of, of energy and mm. a kind of you know, watching the flow going yeah. one to the other until you hit that intersection point where the two lines cross and you just land in that stillness. And so when I'm now because of various different practices that I've done over the years, when I just kind of go into that place, yeah. you know, if I say, you know, drop from your head into your heart space, it's like instantly into that yeah. point, that that space within that's actually infinite because it, yeah. it does, it holds this multi-dimensional light that we are this unified light within us it, and it's been there as well do you think louise i i i think it especially because we're in between eclipses as well so we're in eclipse season and you know the south node eclipse was definitely what are we letting go of and the north node we just had in in aries was what are we bringing in and i honestly felt like the destiny bit was the veil was a lot thinner Oh, I'm yeah. getting more and more people. I'm starting a channeling class tomorrow. I'm running another one and it's completely full. And people, so many people want to actually really embody, you know, the masters and the channeling and really bringing through the messages that to share with the world. And it's it's become the timeline has speeded up big time, I would say. Absolutely. I mean, I was saying at, at the beginning, um, I think it was uh, to either Nora or Peter, mm. that the actual light of the sun is completely different. Um, you know, it it it, it yeah. looks pure white to me. Lots um, of people have said that. And I, you know, I know I travel a lot and I get the sun, right? Because that's who I am. I like to do that. And I remember um, looking at the sun. I was in Greece just recently in Crete. And I remember thinking, wow like the the healing codes from the sun were just like i don't wear any sun cream or any sunglasses or anything and i'm like yeah just give me the sun that's lovely you know everyone's there covered up sunglasses you know hats everything and i'm like no just give it to me yeah. um, <laughs> it was actually so healing it was mm. one of the the things that um uh laura spania um years ago now um when i connected in with with some of her work mm. um I used to burn. I used I used to literally, you know, hide from the sun and mm -hmm. I would instantly get sunstroke, um, mm -hmm. heat stroke, I would burn instantly. It was like factor 50, sunglasses, the lot. Um, and now with with the work, you know, that that she was doing in releasing those Thanks. those codes were that were kind mm -hmm. of you know built into us um that were kind of blocking our connection to source through mm -hmm. the sunlight which is incredibly healing and activating and all the chemicals you're putting in into your skin which is the largest organ of your body which absorbs everything and you're putting all this petrochemical into your skin and also the the glasses really important point is when you wear sunglasses what you're doing is you're stopping the message mm -hmm. from the great thing, this beautiful healing sun. You're stopping the message going to your brain, which creates yeah. the, the protection. So, yeah. you know, you're putting them on and closing off the message. So you're more likely to burn if you've got sunglasses on than you have if you haven't. Absolutely. Yeah. You if you haven't. yeah. I mean, if, if we were meant to wear sunglasses, we would have been, they would have been designed in the vessel. <laughs> 
but but since oh. I've released all of those yeah. programs, tiny tiny programs that yeah. you know we've kind of all um, well mo most people have imprinted yeah. within our fields. Um, suddenly, all the fear of the sun went. I don't wear sunblock. I don't wear sunglasses. I don't cover myself up. Yeah. And I've had absolutely no problems. And I love, you know, I go out like today on, I've been walking the dogs twice today and I've gone out because it's, it's sunny and just basked in, in the rays. And I felt I, the I Egyptians had that, the they had that off tap pat. The Egyptians knew, I mean, they had their temples and their temples had, were open and mm -hmm. they used to, they used to worship the sun. So as the sun rose, they yeah. would they would sit and they would look directly at the sunrise and they would do the same for the sunset and it activated um i'm sure you know this louise but activates <laughs> your pineal gland which is your light center right so it's possible that by putting on all of these creams and we put on the children as well and the babies everything um we're stopping that message of that light being activated in the pineal which is i remember who i am so yeah, I'm not going to get into any speculation there, but it's good if we know this stuff because we can, we can be empowered to make those choices. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely, and and again, you know, um, spirit saying, you know, intention is everything. Mm. So if we like, like you've said, you know, I, you know, make those statements to yourself. I remember who I fully am. You know, I know that I am surrounded by my guides and my allies. You know, whoever they may be. Mm -hmm. When you're making those statements, that you're setting that intention. That is a, yeah. a statement of truth for you. Um, and and it, it that's what creates this break in the cloud. It creates that chink in this dense energy that's kind of built up in our fields for various different reasons. And that then enables you to actually connect into the the energetic experience of that truth um, in, into a kind of more physical knowing. Um, and again, it's kind of sometimes you have to believe it to see it to, yeah. to actually or just, or just give it a go yeah yeah I, you know could you just just give it a go i'm going to test my guides let's test my guides right okay find me a parking space or i'm going to ask the parking angels to find me a parking space or i'm going to ask the parking or sorry the, the table guides in a restaurant to find me a table or you know something like that and and have fun with it because it doesn't have to be so serious you yeah. know and I, and i think we we get quite serious and also all the feathers isn't that beautiful when you see a white feather fall down in front of you when you're talking about something. You're like, oh, thank you for that. You know, Absolutely. just the kind of acknowledgements and the little acknowledgements that you're not you're definitely not on your own, but that you have the, those little indications for you. Yeah. Mm. And, and again, these messages, they're coming to us all the time because we are all connected all the time. Mm. Um, it's just whether we allow ourselves to recognize them. So, you know, yeah. connecting into the light within your heart, awakening that connection and and fully allowing it to be realized means that you're more open to see and hear the messages. And sometimes they're, they're the funniest ways, you know, that <laughs> they'll come through. Songs. I was Songs, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was guided to watch Moana which okay. is a children's cartoon and I'm there going I mean I follow whatever spirit tells me to do now I was like why am I watching a kiddie cartoon and there was one line and I can't recall what it was now but it just hit me it was like oh okay and then I completely understood why I'd been called to watch that film yeah um and another one was Nike had a just do it message um I don't know, they may still I don't know but I, I was asking myself a question as I was walking down the street and three you billboards in a row. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Wendy, you know, my my Wendy, my assistant, she she um is American and she always says, you got this. And I have, she bought me two t-shirts when I was out in San Diego and they go, they, they, they say, we've got this or I got this. <laughs> so it's like, you know, when I wear those, I'm like, you know, actually I'm, presenting that we've all got this we've all got you know we've all got this we absolutely do and it's just sometimes it does feel you know when we when we're we're stuck in a cycle or we feel that um we need to know the answer or 
you know, um, were worried about something, you know, and or, or if you're feeling unwell, you know, if you're feeling unwell and sometimes it, it is, it, it can be tough for people to, to see the light, yeah, and especially the light within your heart. But when you understand, and that might be my sciencey background, but when you understand, God, I'm getting boiling hot, this is the whew, guides coming in, um, when you understand that you are the creator, as you say, Louise, the creator of your reality, and you know that your body is doing the best it can to talk to you and carry your soul, and you know that you've got guidance, even if you can't see them or hear them, you know that there's a little bit of you that knows you're always kind of like guided somewhere, maybe to listen to this, you know, mm -hmm. guided for whatever reason, and um, just trust that a little bit more, then people start to open up and the body starts to not need to show that message anymore and it might show a different message you know and you just kind of like learning to say okay thank you so much for showing me that and and if something happens it's nobody else's responsibility but yours you know it's only ever you and I think when I first realized that many years ago and it was like the law of attraction thing many years ago probably 2011 12 when we had the big kind of you know awakening convergence mm -hmm. and um it was like a light bulb moment and i wanted to ring my ex the father of my children and go oh my goodness i get it i get it i get why i attracted you obviously i didn't do that but you know i i you know it was it was that kind of light bulb moment i was like wow now i get it I've of course I attracted that of course I attracted that person and so I think that that to me is 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 such an empowering place to be um when you remember that everything is a reflection of you you know um that's great isn't it because you can go okay that's a reflection of me okay my bank account looks like this right what part of me doesn't fully remember who I am what part of me isn't living my light lit up what part of me forgot that I am an incredible being of light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that to me is like, yeah, that's what you what we need to do. And in the book actually, in Awaken the Light Within Your Heart, in the third section of the book is all my inner child processes. So if you get it on Audible, it's me talking them through. Um, because I was advised to use my voice and not an actor. So I went to a studio and recorded it uh, professionally. And so I talk you through all the processes or if you buy it in book form or Kindle or whatever, you know, it's in all different formats, then you can read it and you know, go back over it. But, but basically the processes there really help you um, because they're fifth dimensional energy processes um, to work with those little parts of you that didn't get what you needed, you know, that, that did create that message in your bank account or create that message in your relationships or create that message in your body so it's it's um yeah we all have the answers and we absolutely can heal ourselves absolutely and and the fact that we all have these different frequencies within ourselves you know that little child that yeah. maybe didn't receive the love that it it wanted or you know mm -hmm. felt it needed in in whatever moment You've got that within you to to provide it because Absolutely. there's another aspect of you that that is very connected to this divine love and divine light that you are yeah. that can just radiate that light onto that aspect and um, give compassion. Really, yeah, to give you know one thing is really quick, really easy. It takes one second. Something happens, you feel an emotion. Put your hands on your heart, or even if you ha can't do that, if you're in your office or something, just in your mind, just say. I'm so sorry you feel so sad. I'm so sorry you feel so frustrated. I'm so sorry you feel so shocked. What you do in that moment is you give that part of you compassion. Mm. And that's a fast track way of accessing that little part of you. Because that little part of you might not have ever had any language. There might be a baby in the womb. They might be just coming into the world. They might be, you know, the, the Obviously, the reptilian old brain doesn't have language. It's fight and flight. So just giving ourselves compassion 
we don't know how old that child is we might not know how old that child is so in that moment we know there's a part of us that didn't get contained emotionally mm. so it's like I'm so sorry you feel so stuck I'm so sorry you feel so alone I'm so sorry you feel so um, afraid of the world confused of the world confused by love you know whatever it might be yeah but I'm so sorry is really helpful mm, that's brilliant mm. and again so simple and and something yeah. that you, know, you can play with and and let it just grow and expand into to what that is yeah um, take it further obviously later but in that moment it's like yeah, having yeah. it's like having just a little thing a little tool you know mm. So I'm just aware of the time. Mm, uh, time <laughs> has flown by. Mm. Um, I know um, Leila had put a question in the Q and A um, oh, okay. prior to the call, which is always an option on these summits. Mm. If you can't make the live call, there is a form that you can ask questions of the speakers, um, and I always check them before I come on to the to the lives. Mm. Um, and she was asking uh, for help in creating fun and play. And I think that that's a really lovely thing for us all, yeah. um, you know, particularly at this time when the, the external reality can look quite challenging, um, mm -hmm. depending on what your perspective is mm -hmm. and what you're tuning into. So um, is there anything that the guides can offer? Yeah suggest uh for us all to connect in with creating fun and play i will ask them and i will bring them in and um but i do just want to say that you know that bit of just like what lights you up is really helpful because it's you know if i need some me time i'll run an epsom salt bath mm -hmm. and lock the door no kids you know no animals and just be in my peace that's my like oh lovely joy lovely um, but going for a walk by the sea is really lovely. Being with my animals is lovely. So something that lights you up. But let me have a um, let me just have a chat and see what they have to say. Hmm. Hmm. Right. So this is actually the Rainbow Galactics. Um, and uh, what they're saying is, um, it's like a telepathic I kind of, I'll try and interpret it. So they're saying that, of course, you are joy itself. However, we are aware that there are parts of you that sometimes doubt that you are pure joy yourself. And we are here, part of the reason why we are here, blending with this channel and many of you there too we work with you too is that we are trying to blend with your energy to bring a frequency holding the full spectrum of light that we call rainbow light however this is not so much as a rainbow you would see in your earthly plane this is more a frequency of iridescent light you would call it where there is a reflection a true reflection within your field this holds the frequency of unconditional love of course but the frequency of joy so and they're showing me now they're saying um let us show you where this is held so they oh, they want to do an activation okay we will we'll do that but they're showing me that the activation of light is held in the pineal gland and they wish to bring in um, this it's a frequency activation of joy uh, through our pineal gland and through our whole center if that's okay Louise to do that absolutely okay all right so here we go so it comes in as a tone uh, which I'll bring through and then for us all to imagine um, rainbow is the easiest way to imagine it, a rainbow light coming through the crown and right the way through the core and the centre of us. Okay, and then I'll just see if there's anything else. So hold on.
tak. Okay, so they're saying that the uh, resonance and the harmonics of that frequency into the pineal gland, it, it's kind of almost like, um, uh, they're showing it to me rather than telling me. So it like expands out throughout our frequency so that our frequency holds that uh, light of uh, iridescent rainbow frequency of ascension. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Let me just ask if there's anything else. Yeah, okay. So they're saying that sometimes when you receive an activation like this, um, which is embodied into your whole self, into your cells, into your frequency, you sometimes feel a little uh, dizzy or um, ungrounded. And so they, they're saying that this is because you are having a frequency upgrade. So just to imagine your earth star under your feet, <sighs> grounded into Mother Earth. Good, and your soul star above your head. I just feel that sense of connection and groundedness. And we are complete, thank you. <laughs> they will say we are complete afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was funny because light language was coming through me. I was like, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's like, it, that's what happens. They, um, they just blend it, don't they? It's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that for some reason Spirit is telling me to share is that <laughs> I had the realisation of um, a song that I think was in the 80s um, and I'm trying to remember the band. It's not coming to me at the minute. When, but, did, when did it come to you, the, the song? Um, it came to me earlier today oh, and, and it's um, Gold. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know it, I know it because obviously... Yeah. Gold. Always believe in yeah. yeah. Well yeah. when obviously when I still can't remember the band's name, but when that um Spandu Ballet. Yes. Yeah. Is it Spandu Ballet? If, if you're drawn to listen, yeah. listen to yeah. the words of Gold by Spandau Ballet. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, spirit was having it running through my head, running through my head. Now, when I heard it in, I think it was the 80s when it was played, yeah. obviously it was very mainstream and, and you kind of took it from that level. But the frequent, I was told that the frequencies in the song now mm. are, they, they're kind of interwoven within the song. Now, I know we can talk about, you know, the frequency of music now is a lower yeah. vibration than, you know, but if you feel drawn to just connect in with the words of that song because Beautiful. honestly spirit had it looping and looping and looping around in my head today but i feel it really blends beautifully in with this conversation because it's all mm. about remembering yeah you know it's about remembering who we are and we are gold we're yeah. golden we are light we are love yeah. and and it's you know in whatever way you sun can shining can you see the sun's reflecting in now like here in the uk so do you see it reflecting yeah <laughs> reflecting on my hair it's golden sun literally reflecting that's so funny mm. but i just thought you know and that's how spirit works you know it comes through in such a beautiful quirky yeah. funny way and, and fun which is what Layla asked for and so that's literally what they're giving us aren't they there's, a, there's another song that comes through to me, um, and it's a hymn, and it's um, Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. And yeah. I'm not religious at all, but that song comes through a lot when I'm working with people. Mm -hmm. And it's it's because it's about, as I, I can't remember exactly what the Rainbow Galactic said, but it was something about we are that joy. Yes. And that's who we are, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And it's something that you know at this time mm. regardless of what the outside world might look like it's what we're here to remember because the minute that we remember that and and remember it embody it allow it to be embodied within our physical field then we're going to see that reflected yeah. in the outside because it's not just one way you yeah. know the outer reality isn't just reflecting our inner landscape 
for us to do the work and clear and whatever our inner landscape gets reflected out there so the more we can connect in with the light of the heart and that's why for me this is so essential but you know to to lighten our load to lighten our experience of life to connect in with abundance and joy and all those other wonderful things that we are mm. so it's allowing us to raise the frequency to reflect our higher frequencies out into the external landscape yeah to assist in humanity because you know the more you know it always starts with us doesn't it meaning individually yeah. so it starts individually so become that pillar of light mm. or the three pillars of abundance become that pillar of light and then the other person is reflecting that pillar of light and your neighbor is and your friends are and your animals are and your children are and the person who drove down the road is and it's because the new earth i i, I really believe that there's a little bit of the old left and it's like coming into this new expanded frequency and and it's not that we you know will jump or anything like that it's just like a general gradual the more we raise our frequency the more we remember who we are the more our life transforms and changes absolutely absolutely and and it's one step at a time and and again you know it doesn't have to look a certain way it's completely yeah. individual because you hold your own unique magical individuated frequencies exactly of the divine love and light that we all are um and so we all have something to bring to yeah. this collective table um and it's all incredible and beautiful and the first step is for us to to fully you know realize that connect in with that and and acknowledge it and allow that then to radiate out from us into the wider field and not and not to, and if somebody else isn't like your neighbor isn't or your mother isn't or your father isn't or your brother isn't it doesn't matter just be that light yeah. that you wish to see in the world you yeah. know and and that's when it gets to the point where um and i love this saying is i love you so much i don't care what you think mm. you know and you know that it's only me in the family that speaks light language brings through galactic codes you know is a spiritual teacher no one else is in my family like everyone else is not so it's good in a way because I had to step out of the spiritual closet or else I couldn't you know like I had to be different like you said you know you were told how you were meant to be like brought up in a particular way I had to step out of the spiritual closet I never would have been on my journey otherwise That's but nobody it. else does it in our family you know no. It's like, and so if somebody if somebody doesn't believe what you believe, that's okay. It really doesn't matter because you are that representation for change. Absolutely. You're the light of the change in the world. And I think that's a, a really, really good point for all of us, you know. And I think I think the 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 COVID ex experience um showed us a lot of that. You know, mm -hmm. showed us a lot of well, some people choose something, mm -hmm. other people choose something else. And actually, it's about saying, well, that's fine. You know, everyone chooses something else and uh, everyone can be individual in their own expression. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it really is connecting in with your own uniqueness and, and not having to be something for somebody else. Um, the spirit showed me, you know, in many different ways that, you know, there's no hierarchy. Mm. All truths can be different, but they hold yeah. the same standing. They hold... Yeah. The, the same energy um, and it's you know I, I came to a point in my relationship with my dad at one point and we just agreed to disagree you know I love you I respect your truth and where you're coming from and I respect my truth and where I'm coming from and vice versa and so um, yeah that that's a beautiful um, space to be in when we can all kind of collectively honor each other's yeah. uniqueness mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and regardless of how, you know, we're all divine beings. We're all spiritual beings having a human experience, regardless of how people are seeing themselves or how they're expressing themselves. And it's allowing yourself to see the divine light in yourself. Then you can see the divine light in everybody, no matter how they may be expressing themselves. Yeah. 
I just want to share that Susan is offering a free gift. If you haven't already connected in with that, all of the free gifts for the special offers are on the free gifts page at mundanetomagicalliving.com forward slash free gifts. I would highly recommend going and checking that out and connecting in. Um, it's Awakening the Light Within Your Heart. It's a video course um, and it's a free course to help you know how to align to your inner guidance, connect with your inner guide and learn to love your body more which is what this whole conversation has been about. So mm. I would highly recommend connecting in with that um, and, you know, just taking this step or taking a further step into mm. connecting in and awakening your heart. It's been an absolute joy, Susan, mm. to have you on the show. Um, mm. People have loved the activations um, and they've loved the conversations. Um mm. Is there anything that you would like to share or the guides would like to share before we close this transmission? Um, I would like to share that I have a YouTube channel which I set up to reach those that perhaps are not in a position to work with anyone. So every week I do um, a pre-recorded five minute frequency from the guides. Sometimes it's activations, sometimes it's chambers, whatever it might be. Um, and I love I just love the fact it's growing because it means that more people are able to receive what they need to receive so I'd love it if people would find that and it's just my name Susan Kennard um and let me just see let me see uh Hugh would like to come in for a last little word but yeah I've I've um I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation thank you so much for inviting me yeah it's been great okay Okay, it's interesting because it, it's actually Joshua. Uh, Mother Mary is here as well, but but Joshua is stepping forward and and uh, he's saying that um, we have all got a story. <clears throat> Gosh, <coughs> we have all got a story to tell. He's saying, and we have all got a story that we hold within our hearts including me, he says, <laughs> and his story is well known. However, what we feel within our hearts about our story is our own truth and the truth that we need to share with the world, the truth of our own heart, the truth of our own story, so that we can help others feel a sense of unity and a sense of knowing of who they are. Remember that that light within you is your truth and it is your very own story of your life. And he's showing me just, just to let you know that he is blessing our feet. So the sense of receiving from him, from Joshua, from the Christ light, thank you, from the Christ light, so that we can all receive that and he wants us to know that we are all worthy more than worthy to receive christ-like consciousness and so it is mm. <laughs> beautiful wow okay so thank you um you are worthy you are worthy and you are glorious in your uniqueness just allowing yourself to connect in with that light with that love compassion beauty that we each and all hold within our heart fields and can radiate out through our entire system healing ourselves and connecting in with the abundance that is the truth of this reality this daydream that we're all having um so thank you once again susan for joining us it's been an absolute joy to have you on the show mm -hmm. your energy is beautiful you radiate light um, so thank you for sharing your energy with us all thank you to everybody who's joined me on this final live call just to say that this season has been slightly different normally they are um seven 
recordings or live calls um one after the other but because of the situation with david farrell and his accident bella's call will be in a couple of days time it's going to be pre-recorded so this is the live last live call um but i will get the pre-recorded interview out to those who are on the mailing list and of course it will be available on the youtube channel and the and the replay page as all of the conversations are so in the meantime enjoy this space to connect in with the replays to connect in to absorb to integrate the transmissions and allow yourself to kind of play with the different transmissions and try a few of these things out susan shared some very easy very easy quick things that we can all start to to be doing to connect in with our hearts and our light so you know enjoy enjoy yourselves and and see what joy looks like for you in each moment Leila said, great way to spend a Sunday morning here in the US. <laughs> <laughs> I will be holding space for this summit for the next week as well. So feel free to connect in. Um, but the replays are available to you on the YouTube channel forever. So it doesn't matter when you connect in with these calls. It's the perfect time for you to receive these messages. So from me to all of those who have attended live, thank you so much. I always love the interaction, the connection with you all. Um, and I will be signing off this live call and joining you energetically on the pre-record with Bella Alvaran, who will be talking about Mayan time and the magic of the wave spells and how we can work with that natural form of time um, to create the reality that we want to create in. Don't forget we are currently, this is the first day of a 13 day magic cycle of time for us to dream, to dream the reality that we all want to live in and create and manifest in the physical. So it doesn't matter whether you know anything about mind time, whether you know anything about what uh, um, Bella's gonna be speaking to, just know that this 13 day window just allow yourself to dream and dream big you know connect in with the abundance the three pillars of abundance mm -hmm. and just dream the life that you want to see and live in and experience fully so much love to everybody thank you all so much for joining me and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day take care and i shall see you all again on the next summit bye everybody